one. Boom. And we are live. I am joined by Kamiko Neal McNeil. Uh, thank you for coming on. It truly means a lot. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you are my first artist on the show. And what's really interesting about this is sports is like my whole life. Mm-hmm. Music is right up there. And I love like fashion. So those are like my top three. Obviously, sports kind of dominates it, but I everywhere I go, the first thing I do when I wake up is listen to music when I'm working out, um, other than podcasts, any everything. My car, um, I have loudspeakers in my car. I, I'm just, I love music. And so when I had this opportunity, shout out to Dom, I'm like, oh, absolutely, I want you on. Um, so like I said, thank you for coming on. So how are you doing? I know uh, I always, if people listening to this know exactly what I'm about to say. 2020 always made me make sure I say, hey, how are you? Like, how are you doing? Don't take everything for granted. So how are you doing? How's life? I'm doing awesome. I woke up, you know, breathing, clothes on my back, food on the table. So I'm yeah. great. <laughs> That's incredible. So there's so much to get into. But something that I want to ask is to start off, how did you how did you know you wanted to be an artist? You know, like I knew right away I wanted to talk because I can't stop talking. I got in trouble in school for talking. Got good grades, but I was always just talking in class. And then I love sports. I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. I just always found myself debating with people, talking to people about sports. How did you know and when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Uh, it it kind of was in stages for me, uh, specifically because music was very prevalent in my life since day one. Um, my father is a musician and he was a traveling musician, meaning he would tour with different artists like uh, Gina Bell, Shaka Khan, Gerald LeVert, um, all of these people. So with that being said, music was like an alphabet for me. It was very important for my father to implement us playing some sort of instrument at a young age or anything like that. So <clears throat> I knew I wanted something to do with music since a very early age. I started to develop my artistry probably about four to five years ago, because prior to that, I wanted to be uh, a lyricist. I just wanted to to write records for people. Um, and because I just I just love to write just like you love to talk. I love to write about different stories and my point of view about certain things. Um, but like really, my real artistry happened when um I realized I don't want other people singing this. <laughs> like they're not going to sing it the way I want them to sing it. And it's no, no, you know, bad or against anyone for their talents. But sometimes you want people to hear your part of the story, the way you want it to be said. Yeah. So, um, so uh, probably around, like I said, four or five years ago, um, I tried to, to develop things. And uh, then I met with the Olympics and then they kind of like, started pouring out you know after a while because it just felt right because I had like little situations when I was 16 17 I was like yeah I want to be an artist but at the same time it was like I wasn't sure what I wanted to sound like I just knew I loved to 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 record and to write and and things like that so yeah so that's basically how it all developed that's incredible now there's so many things I want to get into but I want to ask you how did you, like, how do you come up with, I don't, don't tell me your secrets, but coming up with stuff to write, the material, is that something that kind of grows organically? It's things that you're going through, things that are on your mind. Is that something you have to sit down and concentrate about? How does that work? How do the words come to you? Uh, it comes in different forms, honestly. Sometimes it comes from just sitting outside, listening to the air, hit the trees, you know, like on some really organic stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it happens after I just had an argument with someone and it comes out or if I'm feeling really good, I had a drink, it comes out. Like it it really depends on what I'm going through in my life. I really try to make as much as my lyricism connect to who I am as a, a human being. So when you do have conversations with me, you're like, Oh, she definitely said that. Like, Right. She that, she didn't have a ghostwriter. Like this is exactly what she sounds right. like, and that's it. So that's basically how it it all kind of happens. It, it all happens just naturally for me, and I do have to concentrate a lot of the time. Um, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes it just 
happens, you know, it's it's really, really difficult to to describe. It happens in waves. Like a, that's probably the best way I could describe it for me. Right. It happens in like tidal waves. <laughs> so my mom um, is a writer and she used to write for the newspaper. And I remember when I would have an assignment in school or um, an idea, she would say, just write it down and let it flow. And she was yeah. before, sometimes like writer's block. Like I, I would just start writing. I'm like, man, I don't like, I don't, I don't like that sentence. And I would just get stuck. She's like, don't think she's like, just write and just let it flow on the paper. You can always go back and fix it. And right. so like I'm preparing for a show or if I have interview questions, I just let it flow. And just my thoughts, I just write as quick. It's probably, it's obviously not to your level, but I just let it <laughs> uh, as much as possible. And then I go back and I'm like, okay, I can change and fix this. Uh, so that's interesting. Now you talk about your sound. How do you find your sound? Is that something where you're like, oh, I really like how that sounded? Is it someone saying, hey, I think you need to do this more? How do you find almost in your way, like your brand, wh what works for you? Um, that's an excellent question, by the way. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it's the peers that I have around me that are really having me notice certain things that I constantly do, but in different patterns, but it's like a signature for me. Like for instance, uh, I love harmonies. So a lot of my records have harmonies in them and I didn't notice how much, how prevalent they were until I had more and more people say, damn, like <laughs> who, <laughs> how many layers is this? And when I'm recording, I really don't, think about oh well I have to do this it just naturally happens for me I naturally put in some sort of harmonies I naturally have some sort of conversation with myself in songs you know so it it, it kind of organically happens in the team around me like pinpoints little things like Kamiko you sound really dope when you do stuff like this you should really hone on to it and it kind of stuck with me after a while and then I naturally started doing things on my own to the point where they were like, oh, well, this instrumental sounds like something you would do. You know what I mean? Like it, it turned into that gradually. But um, it was just a lot of experimentation, as you know, when it comes to just writing in general or music, sports, it comes with a lot of repetition, a lot of dedication, um, because sometimes it's not necessarily always what you want it to come out to be like say that I will do a song and then I will do the whole song but like I hate it <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean like so it takes some time to get the right balance because regardless of what type of music is sent to me I try to make sure that I shine through regardless right. because a lot of artists they try to sound like other people implement things that other people do without saying okay yeah I like what they do but how would I do what they do mm. to make it me you know so that's kind of the whole premise it's, of how that works. And so when someone finds something that works, people tr tr like tend to gravitate and copy that because, hey, this got them their success. And that's why, right. um, like, I listen to a lot of um, hit, like a lot of rap. And I know a lot of people say, oh, he stole his flow or he has the same, he has the same flow every time. He got that flow from this. This person sounds like Drake. Mm -hmm. And they don't kind of, like you said, put it in how would I do this, not right. how would I do this. Now, it's so interesting, though. So how often do you listen to feedback? Or Because I know a lot of times, um, especially the more success you have, you're going to have people that just want to criticize you just to tear you down. Right. So how important is it for you to focus on what the people want and kind of do you adjust to what the people want? Or are you like, no, this is what I'm going to do because I like this and the people that like it will like it because that's that's just how I like it? Or do you have to adjust to what the people want? Um. Uh Kind of both in certain ways, but in different phases. So I have a very like tight knit circle that I communicate with um, to see if I like, hey, should I add this or is this is too empty? Like I don't go out into the world like, hey, do you guys right, right. like this mix? You know what I mean? Like, um, but when it I do listen to certain feedback from the like my fans as well, but it's very minute only because like you said you stated before like sometimes people have their preferences a lot of times people have their preferences um and i don't just do like soul music i can do edm like kachanada type stuff too but that might not be their cup of tea and they might hear it on my page be like oh you should stick to this i'm like i i appreciate you but 
this is also happening because it has to happen. This is where my mindset is, you know. Um, so I listen to my, you know, my fans, but I more so listen to the inner circle because they know mm-hmm. how far I am in my development. And um, fans really don't know what they want unless you confidently put it out there. Like, this is what I like. But if you're like, uh, I'm not sure if I like it, they hear you guys go, you know, like mm-hmm. it or not. Then they're like, well, should I like this? Because you're not sure about it. So I shouldn't be sure about it. So it sucks. You know what I mean? So right. that's basically how that works. You kind of just stick to your inner circle and get the feedback you need. And then as an artist, you have your own like go to things of hey, this is I don't care what anyone says, this is just what's gonna be. So right. yeah, it, you have to have like a balance, really. And we'll get into the Olympics production side of things, but I wanted to ask you now I've noticed this and that's something that I'm trying to figure out currently. Um, like I'll do a lot of interviews and sometimes it's like, uh, Rashad would tell, would tell me like my mentor, he's like, you're sitting on a pot of gold. He was like, put it in spurts. He was like, you don't always have to, um, you don't want to water down your product if you have so many interviews, but then you have different platforms where once you reach a certain level, you have a high demand for it. You can release so many different interviews, but you don't want it to overwhelm people and take away from different people and water it down. So for music, how does that work? Is there obviously contractual things may come up, but Typically, do you like to release? Is there like a pattern in which you like to release your music? Is it like, you know what, I'm going to release this single here and let everyone kind of just soak that in and absorb this? Or do you just say, hey, I'm just going to start releasing? Is there kind of a pattern or a strategy to releasing music? Uh, It is a strategy. Sometimes I stray from it because I'm an artist and I want people to hear my shit. But (laughs) um, just like anything else, you got to think about, okay, the music's fire, whatever. But that's not always everything that's important to making it really pop. Like you need to have the music plus the visuals plus the right uh, promotion, the right meetings, the right interviews, like everything. If you want it to really pop off, everything has to have some sort of order. Because I have probably at this point five albums worth of music, you know, that I would love to you know, have out, but <clears throat> with the society and due to COVID and stuff like that, you have to be really smart on how you release your music because it could be oversaturated. Like you stated before, it could be super oversaturated of, oh, so-and-so just dropped another record, but they also dropped the record when Kendrick Lamar dropped a record. You know what I mean? You have to pay attention sometimes to when other people are releasing, if you have enough, you know, uh, footage to back up this song, um everything like that it's it's a it's really a numbers game that you and I know it's it's a crazy numbers game it's not always just the music because if it was then it would be a completely different situation so uh, it's it's really difficult but it's obviously worth it in the end you just have to kind of be patient and figure it out because I've been wanting to release a single probably for the last couple months because it was a time I think two years ago I was releasing a single like every two or three months. You know what I mean? Just because right now I have 11 singles out. (laughs) 11. Uh So that's enough for an album right there. Um, But I had to kind of slow down because it's like I want people to get a chance to listen to my music uh, unbiasedly without being slammed with another record. And then they will forget about the last record that I just did. Or I would talk to people and be like, well, when are you coming out with an album? I'm like, I have 11 singles out right now. You have 11 singles out? I'm like, yes. Mm. How? I'm like, because I just kept releasing and releasing as an artist and not always thinking about, okay, well, if I release it, I'll wait six months and then I'll have a promo reel or whatever. You know, sometimes that's just how it happens, but... Uh, the closer and closer I get to releasing my album, I have to be smarter on how I how I do things so I can actually have people give me the reaction or hopefully give me the reaction that I would hope to have. So, you right. know, that's initially what that is. That's so interesting because it's like we a lot of people don't understand the process behind it. I mean, I, I'm probably in that group as well. Like, for example, Drake was supposed to drop Certified Lover Boy or like J. Cole was supposed to have his album soon. And. Kanye said he was going to release his album soon. And 
it's like, man, and people are like, why isn't he releasing? Why isn't he releasing? It's like, because there's so many things that go behind the mm-hmm. scenes that you have no idea that's going on. But we're sitting here because we just love the music. Hey, why is he not releasing? We want it. We want it. We want it. Um, so, okay. How do you go about making a single? And then we'll, I want to get into like your album, but like, how do you go about making an album? But as far as just like a single, what's the first step of it? Oh, I have a, a, is it a melody? Is it a lyric? Is it a beat? What, how do you like, what's the first process from scratch to making a single? Well, fortunately I'm signed with a production group, a production team. So they're constantly throwing me music all the time, every single day. Um, So more than likely, it comes from music uh, that has been sent to me from my team. Um, It's been a lot of times, like, for instance, uh, one of the uh, people from the team of Olympics, JFAB, he had a 90-day beat challenge. And a lot of, like, I... (laughs) He would post it on his Instagram and I would say, send it to me. I would make the record and I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're just going to release this. Like, (laughs) if it feels good, a lot of the times we would just put it out there. You know what I mean? Because there are records that he sends me or or whatever and it just, like, clockwork. Everything comes out perfectly mixed sounds amazing and it just feels good if it feels good a lot of the time then we'll just go on ahead with it you know what I mean and he, they make it easy because the records that they give me are ridiculous so right. <laughs> like how can I not want to have a single all the time that's what's made it so difficult to not to not drop things because it's right. constantly fire being sent to me. So, yeah. And now, so your album, do, will your album have like a certain theme? Is there like a certain message that you're trying to send? Is there a certain uh, mood? How does that go about it? Or is it just a mix of, hey, I like this song. I like how I did this song. I like how I did this. How do you go about putting together that type of project? Uh, well, the theme of the project has kind of morphed into so many things originally because I don't want to give it away too much yeah. but um I will say the first album will be called Karma um and it's gonna be a three-part album that I will be releasing you know so it'll be the first one then the second one and the third one but the third one will uh make the first one and second one make sense you know oh. what I mean so it's it's basically a full storyline Um, of how karma uh, like really affects people if they feel like the karma they're receiving is just and all of this is basically uh, depicted from my experiences or this experiences around me you know so and I feel like that's a battle that everybody goes through like oh karma will take care of them but what if that karma was your karma you know what Mm -hmm. I mean like you don't really know how you affect other people because you know you're looking at things from your point of view from someone else's you might be you know the worst person in the world you know what I mean and you could have just had a bad day so you you never know you know what people are going through you never know what karma you feel as though you deserve or they deserve so it kind of goes through that type of mood but through my eyes so that's 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 pretty intense. Like one thing that I love about um, certain albums that tells a story, and I think a lot of people gravitate towards that. Is like, wow, they're they're saying something deeper than like what's the message behind it. And I think people really rally behind that. They can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hits them uh, like than just a regular song. It's like okay, there's a message being sent to me. Exactly. Uh, so how would you describe your sound? So if no one heard you. How would you describe your sound? I know "Told You So" is a good example of that. So, how would you describe? <laughs> how would you describe your sound to someone that's listening to this and like, "Wow, I really want to look into this person. I want to hear what they are about." How would you describe your music or your sound? Uh, I would describe it as a conversation uh, that you wish you had out loud. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I say a lot of things that people think but they don't say it out loud. You know what I mean? Or if they do say it out loud, they feel as though it's not received correctly. So what better way of expressing it than in a song where it's soothly 
you know, expressed to you and you can understand it without being offended or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I could definitely say my music is that. And it's full of a lot of the times like a good bass line and live instrumentation. That's really important to me. I'm a very melodic person. So I need to have that type of feel to my music as well. Um, it's harmony consumed, like I said before. It's just everything that I feel like your ear needs to really be able to understand the message because a lot of times you, a lot of people need something to kind of reel them in. And a lot of my melodies with the melodies of the record kind of reels people in to say, what the hell is she talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, what? Did she really just say that? You know what I mean? Like, that's right. the type of music that I, I initially do, especially because of where I came from and how I was raised, you know, because, you know, obviously people in Michigan, they have Motown. Um, so a lot of live instrumentation and good musicianship is very imperative for a lot of people's ears here. I'm from the East Coast where you have Sigma Sound Studios and people like Jill Scott and, you know, Erica Badu, Music Soul Child, uh, Questla, like all of these amazing people. That, and I'm only right. saying like a little bit of people, you know what I mean? So all, all of that is definitely in my music as well. And it's funny that I'm working with people from Michigan because they have that type of feel as well. So it kind of was like hand in hand. It was supposed to happen <laughs> in a way. Right. And then that gets me to my next question actually is, so you pre- um, signed with the Olympics production group, produced a lot of Rick Ross's albums. I know that they, so you signed to them. Take me my audience through like, what is it like working with a production group? How important is fit? What does it mean for you? Cause a lot of people don't understand that side of things. Uh, it's important because it's, it's important to have people who are really genuinely in your corner and know what this industry is and how crazy it can be. So the fact that I am involved with people who have been in the music industry for 10 plus years, that is extremely uh, a gift because a lot of people go into it and just like they're hype off of any type of situation that they have and don't say, wait, let's think about this. Like, let's think about this (laughs) before we, because without paperwork and proper rep- representation, which is something that is extremely imperative, um, you can get screwed over regardless if you're talented or not, you know, mm-hmm. or you could lose yourself, especially as a woman in this industry. You can lose yourself really quickly if you succumb to what everyone who isn't experienced in this industry wants you to do. You know what I mean? So I, I was extremely blessed to be able to. Uh, get involved with them already being veterans in this industry, to say the least, not even including how amazing their music is. So that's that's extremely important for anyone who is trying to have a career in this. They really need to like listen to the people who are already in this industry uh, so they can have a better footing on what's going on. It's very, it's very important. Because bef- prior to them... I knew things here and there, but as far as how things can go, uh, I had no clue. (laughs) I had no clue. But it also gives me, like, the fire to want to do everything the right way. I know I'm not going to be able to do everything perfectly, but the right way because they still have their reputation to withhold. So I can't go out there looking crazy. You know what I mean? Like I have to make sure everything we do or everything they uh, say that I should do is different. It's fresh and it's befitting them, not only me, but them as well. So, right. Yeah. (laughs) Now I can kind of relate in a way where it's like, so I'm a young broadcaster and it's like, I'm not supposed to know everything. I'm not going to, like you said, I'm not going to be perfect, but I think if you have the mindset that you have, and it's like just an open mindset, um, being able to receive advice and knowledge and be able to utilize it and just approach things with that type of mindset, I think is the best way, which is the way you're doing. Um, Now, as far as the pandemic, so the pandemic happened, obviously it happened to the whole world. So everyone's just taken off guard. Everyone has to adapt. Everyone has to evolve. More businesses are going to like Zoom and Skype and um, 
Skype's probably a little old school, but it, it works for me. Um, <laughs> That, so, every, so everyone, every every business is adapting. Some are thriving. Some didn't work. We just evolved. We adapted. Um, for you as a musician, how did it affect you? It, was it better, or worse? What did it really not have an effect? How was that for you? It affected me in a good way and a bad way. The good way because it gave me more self awareness because I had to sit my ass down somewhere, um, and it really had me unlock a lot of uh, insecurities in a way with myself. Uh, a lot of self-reflection on me, my music, how I'm doing things, because I'm the type of person that really does maybe six or seven mixes of the same song. You know, that's the type of person that I am. So uh, during the pandemic, it, I had conversations with the right people, like I said, self-reflection, and it, it really made me realize, like, hey, just... Put it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. just 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 send it. What is what is this mental block that you're having? The song is done. You spent over a hundred hours on this two minute and thirty second song. Like what is really stopping you? And I was like, Well, I need to start meditating. I need to start doing something of that nature so I can get my mind right so I can freely create without trying to make meet some sort of expecta expectation all the time you know because then if you're doing that then are you an artist or are you just an employee that is just trying to look for the night the right way to be on you know what I mean like I don't right I don't want to have that type of mindset on the bad side I had to sit my ass down like I, I couldn't do a lot of the traveling that I wanted to do uh last year I was supposed to release karma but I couldn't because I couldn't do the videos and, you know, the visuals. I, I couldn't do any of that. Uh, financially, there were hiccups here and there because, like, like I said before, I'm a musician. So if I can't produce my services to you and people can't give me money because they're short, you know, it can get really hazy. It can be a really bad place to be in. So... COVID has been like a double-edged sword <laughs> in a way for me, but I'm very blessed to be able to still be here being as though so many people have, you know, perished during this situation or lost their minds, you know, things like that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that I'm still able to have my close knit of friends and still be able to create and still have the fans that I do regardless of, what's going on with that so right and it sounds like in a weird way obviously we don't wish this were to happen and people to lose their 